EBD Assessment and Identification and Issues and Trends. Assessment to identify students with EBD is complex and requires significant expertise to test and interpret the data collected. Teachers have an important role in the collecting of data for the evaluation process. The evaluation process includes interviews with parents and teachers, use of academic testing, observations both formal and informal, functional behavioral assessment, and the use of behavioral rating scales, behavioral assessment systems, personality inventories, and projective tests. Remember that IDEA mandates that to identify a student as having EBD, more than one type of test must be used. In other words, more than one type of data. There are numerous screening instruments that have been developed to address the evaluation of behaviors and the social and emotional domains. The screening process helps us identify students who are having behavioral problems so we can start interventions and so we can do a more in-depth evaluation. The in-depth evaluation is usually conducted by a psychologist or psychiatrist. Within the school system, it will be the psychologist. One type of test these experts use is a projective test. Projective tests are often ambiguous. They are based on open-ended tasks or questions. Projective tests are not sufficient evidence to make a diagnosis, and they yield little information that helps in educational planning. Teachers may never use these tests or interpret them. Personality inventories are also completed by a trained psychologist. Teachers will be asked to complete behavioral and emotional rating scales on students. Teachers are asked to rate the student over the past four weeks, thinking about each criteria. Generally, each teacher that works with a student is asked to complete the rating. There are usually different forms of the rating scale for different age groups. For example, the Devereux has forms for ages 5 to 12 and 13 to 18. Listen to the type of questions asked for younger children on the Devereux. During the past four weeks, how often did the child, one, annoy others, two, become very upset or emotional if he or she didn't get what he or she wanted, three, fail to participate in activities, Four, say that others were picking on him or her. Five, get rejected or avoided by other children. Six, become disruptive or get in trouble while he or she was playing. The Connors addresses behaviors associated with ADHD. It has a form for the parent, teachers, and the student to complete. It is important that teachers are familiar with these rating scales. Take time to look at these tests online. Direct observations and FBAs are two more types of assessments that teachers may be involved in. Read more about FBAs in your textbook. Issues and Trends in the Field of EBD The first issue is prevention. We have violence in our society, media, and TV. Violence in schools, bullying on the playground, cyberbullying among children and adolescents. What we need is early identification. Medications remain a top issue 
for the APA. Use of positive behavioral supports is something every school district should be doing and every teacher should know about. Placement issues continue and one of the hottest topics in EVD is IDEA and discipline. Although this chart is from 1995, not much has changed concerning the placement of students with EBD. Large number of students with EBD are in self-contained classrooms. Many will be served by resource services and in the general classroom. Success depends upon the quality of interventions and the consistency of intervention. Now let's look at IDEA and discipline. When a student engages in negative behaviors, the first rule is no cessation of services. Special education is their right and we cannot take that away from them. Schools must make a manifestation determination when a student has these negative behaviors. They will answer three questions. Was the IEP appropriate? Did the disability impair the student's ability to understand the impact and the consequences? Did the disability impair the student's ability to control behaviors? Remember, these students can be suspended but they cannot have their special education services stopped or denied them. If the behavior is a manifestation of the disability, schools may suspend or place in a different setting for 10 days. Interim alternative educational setting for up to 45 days if the student carries a weapon, uses or sells drugs, or is likely to injure self or others. The school must report student to the appropriate law enforcement authority, but must include information on disability status. The following 911 story illustrates the complexities of manifestation determination. It was almost the end of school at my middle school, and it seemed that every spring some foolish child decided to set off the fire alarm. It was after lunch and all my kids were in the classroom quickly. The alarm went off and out we went. I knew it wasn't a fire drill, so I assumed it was another foolish middle schooler. We were outside for a longer time than usual. And then finally, the word came to let the kids sit in the shade. This was going to take a while. When we got into class and started math, along came George the monitor, asking for one of my students. A little later, he came back for another. When George came for the third, I had to ask what was going on. He said one kid had brought in a cell phone and at lunch they called in a kid choking on a chicken bone emergency for a nearby school. It was so much fun they called in something worse for our middle school. All five of the kids were in serious trouble. Four were in special education resource class, and one was in general education. Mr. Sly was the one who brought the cell phone. He claimed it could only call 911, and he had accidentally hit the call both times. Mr. Sly was in resource for a learning disability, which was fairly mild. He had trouble with math and reading, but most of the time it was his behavior that caused problems. He was the one that I could never catch at his devious deeds, like putting paper in the overhead so it would catch on fire, hiding books, 
programming the computer to read, Harris is a... B he could cleverly start a fight and get the other guy to throw a punch just as George came around the corner. Mr. Lamb was the smallest, but the oldest of the guys. If he was with adults, he did what they said. If he was with the teacher, he always wanted to please her. If he was with the guys, he would do whatever they said. He was in the resource room for a learning disability, but had an IQ that was very, very low average. Mr. Joe Average was in general education and just happened to be hanging out with Mr. Sly that day. Mr. Basketball was in the resource room for a significant learning disability. He tried hard, but all academics were difficult due to problems in reading and written language. But on the basketball court, he was king, tall, funny, friendly. When the gang invited him to check out the cell phone, he laughed and headed for the court. Mr. Mouth was on his way to shoot hoops, too, but Mr. Sly was asking, what school, what school? So Mr. Mouth said, Dodge! He had sharp hearing and an even sharper wit. He always had to put his two cents into every conversation. Mr. Mouth had a 135 IQ and a learning disability in spelling. Technically, that's why he was in resource, but it was his significant ADHD that caused the majority of his problem. Mr. Joe Average was suspended for 45 days. This meant he missed graduation and didn't get to start high school in the fall. For the others, three were suspended for 10 days because they were in special education. Mr. Basketball was the only one found innocent. While they were gone, I did mounds of paperwork. Each student had their IEP reviewed and a manifestation determination completed. Think about what you know concerning Mr. Sly, Mr. Lamb, and Mr. Mouth. Do you think their disability was a factor in their behavior? For Mr. Sly, who brought the cell phone and made two 911 false reports, his behaviors had nothing to do with his mild learning disability. However, since other devious behaviors were a consistent pattern, it was determined that he should be reevaluated and eventually he was placed in an EBD classroom for having a conduct disorder. Since he was considered to be the main culprit, he was transferred to another school. For Mr. Lamb, who was just with the guys as they made the calls, his behaviors had nothing to do with his learning disability, but did have everything to do with his low IQ. Therefore, his IEP was rewritten to include counseling. Additionally, behavioral objectives were added to his IEP to address self-advocacy. This was aimed at teaching Mr. Lamb not to just follow the guys, but to think for himself. For Mr. Mouth, who had only said one word, Dodge, to name the school, for the 911 operator. His behavior had nothing to do with his learning disability or his high IQ, but everything to do with his ADHD. What was troublesome about Mr. Mouth was that he didn't understand how serious a false 911 report was. His IEP was rewritten to add counseling. When my two students returned after their 10 days, everyone was mad. Why did Mr. Joe Average get suspended for 45 days 
and the special education students only got 10 days. The students were mad, the teachers were mad, and I was very unhappy. For me, the problem was how they just didn't get how serious this was. When I talked with Mr. Lamb and told him his grandma could have been dying when the EMTs went to a false alarm, he did respond appropriately. When I talked to Mr. Mouth, he didn't understand why he should be in trouble over one word. He argued that he had done many other worse things, which was true. I countered with a stern, out on the streets in today's world, one word could get you killed. He hadn't thought of that, but still didn't really get it. So I went to the principal and said I wanted to do more than just send these kids to the counselor every day. He liked my plan. The boys would be under house arrest never allowed to go anywhere without an adult. They had to wait for George or me to pick them up from one class to another. Never went to get a drink, use the restroom, eat lunch, or play outside without an adult next to them. The boys argued that they weren't babies. Everyone else smiled as they suffered humiliation. Meanwhile, Mr. Basketball kept smiling and worked on his jump shot. Students with EBD are hard, hard to reach and hard to teach. What needs to happen is that schools and teachers try harder to ensure these students are successful because their education must be special.